Drake and Kendrick and J. Even J. Cole, they all came and just made this thing the top of, it's just, it's back. Would you guys have rather me stay with this lady and me be unhappy and me dogger or something? What would you want me to do? I remember like the last conversation I had with Nipsey, he was telling me to name that album, Faith of a Mustard Seed. What up, it's Mustard and you're watching Billboard News. You picked the perfect time to stop by Billboard. Hot 100, number one song, yeah. Not Like Us, man. How's it feel at this point in your career to be topping man. the Hot 100? Man, I keep saying it and I, I can't say it enough. It's gotta be God. Like, cause if you think about this, like, I think like a couple months ago, I knew I had this whole album and I'm just like, okay, what am I gonna do to get myself back hot? What am I gonna do to, you know, I, I can't, I don't wanna do drip checks no more. I did that already. I don't wanna do the weight check stuff. I've done that already. I wanna get as much as in shape as I can. But, you know, I was just like, what am I gonna do? How are we gonna spark for people to be like, oh, I wanna hear Mustard again? You know, that's just like, I think every artist would think about that. And then the song came out and then it was just like, well, there's yeah, the my album promotion. Yeah, yeah that, there's my rollout. That's, that's all I needed for a rollout. They not like us. They not like us. They not like us. Me and Kendrick have been talking for years. Like literally, I've been trying to get a song with him for years. Maybe two years. Uh, maybe three years. Before I even made him made that beat, I was sending him. I got into a place where I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna just send five beats a day. I'm gonna send four beats. I'm gonna go in the studio. I'm gonna send five beats. I maybe send him five beats a day for like. Maybe two months, three wow. months, maybe three months. Wow. I still do it right now. I'm still, I'm still doing like, it right I'm now. Still currently, I'm still doing it right beat. now, just in case you want to record <laughs> something. But I sent them uh, that beat, and then uh, I think that day, I won't make it a point just to go to the studio and make a couple beats to send to them, just in case. I didn't. This is before all the stuff. I didn't know nothing about anything. Right, but even with the the style of the track, you know, yeah. K Dot's not really necessarily known for this club vibe yeah. that you guys capture in such a beautiful way with that track. So, did you think that was going to be the one he? Nah, I didn't. I didn't know. I, I had no idea. I think that when I go in to make music, I'm just like making stuff that I think was, is tight. I'm not gonna say anything that I think is like, eh, you know, like so. In my mind, when I made that, I was just like. I remember getting a sample and my homeboy sent me the sample, his name is Sean Mombert. He sent me the sample and I started chopping it up and I sped it up and I was just like, I did the drums and I'm like, this is fire. I didn't know what anyone would do to it. So once again, I was just sending him beats at the time. I sent him the beats and I remember I was going to my manager's birthday party and that was like April 6th and I was going to his birthday party. He was having like a surprise birthday party, so I was running late. I'm like, oh, I gotta go. I gotta go. So right. I did those beats, sent them, went to the dinner. He never responded until like 12 at night. I was like, this is fire. Wow. I didn't know what that, I mean, he had said that about a couple other beats, but I was just like, okay, all right, cool. And then, yeah. Oh, that's so tight. And then what do you think about the cultural impact as well? Because, you know, obviously with the lyrics, talking about colonizers and they not like us. I yeah. mean, the people singing at the club, at the barbecues, I mean, it's everywhere. So do you see that? And do you think about the cultural impact that your song has? Yeah, I'm, sometimes I'm, I'm like shocked myself, you know, when I when I look and I'm I'm seeing this. I always tell everybody this though, like it only takes one. You need one song, like you can work your whole life, you get one song, and it can change your life forever. And and it's just that that comes with repetition and just doing it over and over and over again. But when I see people, like how big that song is, I don't think I even understood how big it was until it was like number one, and I was like, this is the biggest song I ever had in my life, you know, and it was it was. I was so I was more just happy to have a song with Kendrick. I was like, this is, <laughs> he just wanted you know, the Kendrick. Yeah, track. I just he wanted didn't expect like, the from, number one. Yeah, in like, all you this. come from California. You from here? Like, I'm born and raised in Los Angeles. Compton is right up the street. It's not far, and you you see like people like Kendrick. You just like, man, I want to get a song with Kendrick. It's only a few things that I want to do. That's like that will, that makes me happy, and not about it's not about anybody else. It's more of my my self goals. It's like I want to do a song with Jay Z one day. I want to do a song with Beyonce. At one point, I want to do a song with Rihanna. I always put all that, speak it all to existence, and I'm just I manifest everything. I, I think about what I want to do, and everything I've manifested, I've done. And I don't think there's no like there's nothing that can get into my way. I just always in my mind, I know it's gonna it's gonna happen one day. And then in general, when it comes to hip hop culture, how do you feel about what this has done for, for beef. Some people are like, oh, beefs are back. This is great for hip hop. Some people are like, they never left. How yeah. do you feel about this whole process? I think it's, it was good for hip hop. I think that what people are not realizing is that, you know, they were, people were saying that. 
the labels were firing people. Their people were losing their jobs, and Drake and Kendrick, and J even J Cole, they all came and just made this thing the top of. It's just it's back, it, and I don't think it never left because I just you know I, I do hip hop, I do rap music, but I think that that whole time at that moment, I think everybody was on their phone like, what's gonna happen next? What's gonna happen next? Dude, it was like people were addicted. Yeah, it was just like a, and another track, and yeah, another, and another, track, and another like, track, and then it showed you how like how good both all those guys really are. To record that fast at a record time like that is, that's crazy. Like, it don't even make sense. It's just like, I mean, definitely what it did for me. So I'm, I'm like, wow. 5 a.m. in a parking lot. Old black trucks taking parking spots. You also worked on your first single parking lot with Travis Scott. You guys yeah. have a, had a great relationship with yeah. some hit music. So yeah. why was he the one that you wanted to get on the first track out there? Another thing is like, it's just God's time. I had a whole nother song that I, I still have. And it was like him, 21, and Uzi. And I went to New York one day to do some stuff with Ella. And he was just like, yo, where you at? I'm about to pull up. And I'm like, all right. And he came, he did a couple songs, and that was one of them. And I was like, I really feel like this feels like summertime. And I just fell in love with that song. And then a couple weeks later, or months later, he came and he finished the song. And I was just like, this is it. This is what I want to lead off with. Because I just felt like it was just like, felt so summertime vibes. like. And that's where I go for well, it. I always want the summer. summer. Yeah, I, I just like the summertime, so I thought that's what would feel good. Outside, both beautiful for the summer. She don't wait on men, but wait a minute for the summer. Why was Faith of a Mustard Seed the album title? Because when I was doing Perfect Ten, I remember like the last conversation I had with Nipsey, he was telling me to name that album Faith of a Mustard Seed, and I'm just like, what? what? Like, I already got my title. I'm not switching my title. And, we talked for like hours that night and I always just kept it in the back of my head. And he was just like, well, if you don't name this one that, then you should name one of your albums. One, you gotta do an album called Faith of a Mustard Seed. I had this period of time in my life where, um, I don't know what it was, but I just felt like um, when, you, when you are coming from somewhere, or like the ghetto or whatever, you, you seem to, you tend to think that like bad things will happen. And I asked Nipsey, why, what do you think that is? We just had, used to have random conversations. I'm like, what do you think it is that, you know, you always think something so good, you can be, your life would be in really, really good condition. You're doing good, the best things that happen to you. And you think like, oh, something bad can happen. That would be in the back of my head. And I remember he sent me a, a, a T.D. Jakes, um, I think when he was like preaching and he was like talking about, you know, it's just because of where you come from you start to think in the back of your head that something good happens, something bad gotta happen. And it was just like, that's just like a thought. It's not, it's not real. It's not a real thing. That if you don't have faith, you walk away and change your course because you don't think you can do it. The track with your mom, this album as a whole is pretty personal for you. You yeah. sample your mom and your sister's voices on there. You're talking yeah. about COVID-19 and people that you lost. So yeah. how was it to kind of take such a personal approach with this project? I think as I was making it, it kind of like start. I started diving into like what faith of a mustard seed meant. Reading the Bible, reading you know what God said with the faith of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. Then I started thinking about my life in general, and I'm just like, ah, you know what? What's going on? And I started thinking about like COVID. When COVID came, I lost the most weight in my life. I have been trying to lose weight for so long. COVID came. I, I'm a hypochondriac, so like I can get a cut right now and be like, ah. I need to go to the hospital, you know, like something like that. When I thought about that whole thing of like the the faith of a must see my grandparents, both of my grandparents passed in COVID, from COVID. And it was just like, what was going on? And then, you know, I lost friends, I got divorced and all that type of stuff. So it was just like, I just feel like God was just mo like, it was so much going on at, at one time or that time span. And it was just like, I don't know. It's just like, I think this whole album is contributed to like it's not a gospel album. I don't want people to think that, but it was like I feel like right now where I'm at in my life is I can only contribute and and all, up until this point I can only contribute my success and what I'm going through and feeling and how he's removed people from my life to God. I know you probably have pressure as well from people wanting to know like what happened with you and what happened. Yeah. You're, everybody always, of course, talking about your relationship. You yeah. mentioned the divorce. So how was it to kind of like address that stuff publicly on the record? I think like what people don't understand is that like I don't have no hate in my heart or no ill. I don't move with like that type of aggressive aggression towards a person. But I think with the internet, they feel as if that like you're you're not allowed to be to not to leave a situation. It's almost like you got to stay with this person. And it's like I, I sometimes wonder when it's like 
you know, like I'm in a whole new relationship. I'm having a baby girl. It's like, in my thought process, like it's been a long time, guys, let it go. You know, it's okay for people to separate. But I, I often think about like when my, my girl that I'm with, she may post something and they just get crazy comments or crazy shit that comes along with it. And I'm almost like, would you guys have rather me stay with this lady and me be unhappy and me dog her or something? What would you want me to do? They don't want anything. You know, it's just like, it's, drama, it's, it's, yeah, it's almost <laughs> like y'all y'all want to find a reason or you want to find a scandal. Or, that's the part of my life that I think with this faith of a mustard seed, I think like the internet is not a real place. You know, I, I get up every day. I take my kids to school. I, you know, I, I'm with my kids. I have them half the time that she has them. It's like, I've never and never will say anything crazy on the internet about this person. And I don't even put, I don't project that type of energy out. You know what I'm saying? But I do understand that the internet's not a real place. I do understand that I get up every morning and I take my kids to school and I'm a dad and I'm with them and I have all the support that I need to help them get to where they need to go. So that thing is like a little confusing for me. Well, people Dude. can learn from you. I mean, the internet yeah. is not real, people. This it's definitely that. not real. Also, you're a CEO, you're a yeah. boss, man. So talk about like owning a label for 10 years. Uh, I think it's been a journey. I think what we've created and what we've done so far is only like the beginning. And I think that what we're looking to do is gonna be much bigger than what we've ever done. And we've got like people like Amira and District and even Kiana Luday. We got a, a, few, a good roster, but it's kind of hard for me to like juggle everything sometimes. So as far as like musically, I try to put my hand in everything, but. And do you ever think about like the past when you think about where you've arrived now? Like I was just looking at the 2014, the source cover. It's like you and Ty and YG from Push and Zing. Like that, what year was that? That, that was 2014. That was, <laughs> that was 10 years was ago too. Yeah. So I was like, how, how has it been to like, and y'all had an album y'all was supposed to put out. Yeah, Is, man, are we, we gonna just, get the album? I, I don't know. I think we just <laughs> have like a, we're some crazy guys. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's any one person's fault. I think that we just be moving around and everybody's doing something. So hopefully one day, I think, you know, it could be tight. But uh, if I think about that, like that time, I think at one point we were supposed to all do a label together and we just didn't do it for whatever reason. But kind of happy we didn't because I found Ella and I was happy. But when I think about stuff like that, I just think about, man, whoo, that was a long time ago. Nah, nigga, can't that's a call because I'm balling. I was waking up getting racks in the morning. You peaked at number 11 with Roddy Rich with Ballin'. Yeah. So take me back to that time, and did you know that song was gonna have the legs that it had? It was two people that told me about that song that was like, this is gonna be a good song, and it was gonna be big. When I did it, I made the beat uh, with one of my producers named Gil Tripp, and then uh, Roddy would always come to the studio even if I wasn't there, I'd be like, yeah, just pull up. My David there, my engineer's there. Just pull up and do some stuff. And I remember David texting me, he's like, you doing the song right now? I asked him, how's it going? I'm at home. I'm like, how's it going? He's like, it's going cool. He just did this one song. He sent them to me. I was like, this is fire, which was balling. And then uh, we got to the album time, close to the album. And Nipsey was supposed to be on that song Wait, as what? well. Yeah, Nipsey was supposed to be on balling. And Young Thug was supposed to be on balling at one point in time. And Nip, I don't know what happened, how Nip didn't, I think, that's when he passed or something like that. But um, he was supposed to be on that song. And then I went and seen Kanye. Like once I was done my album and I played on my whole album. And he's like, this right here should be your intro to your album. And I was like, what are you, what? Well, like, when Ye speaks. Be, yeah, I'm like, that's not gonna be the intro. And then my manager, he was like, man, this this gonna be one of the ones. And I was just like, all right, cool. I never thought about it anymore. And then it was just like, crazy. Your career has just continued mm -hmm. to get bigger, so I wanted to throw some of these out and just see what comes to your mind when you think about these yeah. collabs. Mariah Carey. Crazy. What do I think about it? It's like, I just think that, sometimes I'll be forgetting about stuff like that, like, Mariah Carey, she's cool. She's super cool. I remember, like, talking to her in the studio about this crazy Birkin bag she had. It was, it was insane. <laughs> the Birkin bag shocked you? It shocked me, yeah. It definitely shocked me. It's like a crocodile Birkin. Like, it was something crazy. This is before, this is a long time ago. This Maybe, I don't know how many years ago that song was, but it was a long time ago. And I was just like, how much is that bag? And she was just like, expensive. Like, some <laughs> crazy stuff like that. Was like, That's cool. That's amazing. Yeah. What about Rihanna? Man, I love Rihanna, man. I remember that night when I did Needed Me, or when I was going to do Needed Me, I wasn't even, I had went to the, to the where they was working on the album, um, it's like this crazy house in Malibu or Santa Barbara, something. And I wasn't at my studio, 
And I remember I went to the house before and I didn't really catch nothing that night. And then my, uh, one of my managers was like, come back and come back and do some stuff. I'm just like, well, I don't wanna go back. I really didn't, I wasn't gonna go back. And I don't, I don't remember who it was, but somebody called me, was told me, like, man, just come on, man. You might just go, I'm gonna just drive yeah. you there. And yeah. they drove me there. And I called Stara and Prince Charles and I went to, I, while they were doing, the beat was done. And while they were doing that, the writing the song and with, with that whole situation, I was in another room, like just sleep. And I woke up and I remember, and I didn't, I never thought nothing of it. Like, You're I never, kidding me. Yeah, I promise. I never thought nothing of it. Like I never thought it was going to be like, I didn't, I didn't think about it after that. After that, I just left. And then one of my managers called me, he's like, hey, you got one on the album. I'm like, for real? That's he's wild, like, yeah. bro. He's like, your tag is the only tag on this album. I never oh, noticed that. Wow. That was pretty crazy. That's amazing. <laughs> I was good on my own, that's the way it was. I actually want to ask you about that. The tag, obviously it's YG, but yeah. where, where did it, what's the origin? Uh, I think just me being in the, in Inglewood, where I used to be at YG house all the time. I, I used to st damn near stay there. And um, I used to just go through his files of like songs we did and songs he did. And I would remake the beat to him. And the song I'm Good came about like that. We did a song called I'm Good and it was just a, song that he already had it was a beat to it it was and i was in his room he had the studio in his room he was gone and um i just remade the beat to the to that song i did it right there on the spot and he had said it in there and i just took it from there i, I wasn't thinking i didn't know what i was doing i just took it from there and i was like, i'm gonna put this on all my beats and that's what how it happened wow so you're yeah. just digging through and found found some gold yeah, apparently yeah. we're talking about of course your album your new hot 100 number one yeah. but do people know that you really want to be a tennis champ <laughs> i man i try to tell people all the time that's like when i get on tour when i do go and play in wimbledon i don't want anybody to be surprised because i've been <laughs> this, I i've been, I've been like this I, I'm every day with it. And you play with some of like the biggest tennis pros and you get coached by like professionals as well. Yeah, I play, I play, I, I returned one of T.I. for a service. I don't know if he was going like really hard, like trying to like be serious with me, but I'm going to hold on to that because even if he wasn't, that's his fault. It's not mine. So I returned one of his serves. So now that gave me the, the confidence to know that like, but like I said, I, I really feel like I'm not even joking right now. I really feel like I could do anything I want to do. No, see, I trust I you. You went to the U.S. Open. Yeah, you know. I mean, people I was, don't play I was that really, go to the U.S. Open. I was US really Open. in there where they was working out and everything. Carlos Arden was, what's happening? What's up? You know, I got pictures to prove it. Like, I was really there. So I don't think it's going to be unusual when I'm suited up, really ready to play against them. Oh, people are going to be ready. I'll be telling them that, too. I, when I see them, I'll be like, I'll see you when I'm ready, when I, when I get it. It has this something that's been in your whole life. I just is this like something recently nah, happened, or were you like, like a tennis pro in high nah, school? Nah, 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 nah. This is this is something new. I did see Lil Dicky. He said on a on some something. I seen the clip where he said he was good in high school. I like to play anybody that's a celebrity. Anybody that thinks they're good, I think I, I would love to play them because I think I'm better than all of them. Anybody in this caliber, like as far as like on some music stuff, I think I'm the best. Okay. I th hey, I think this needs to be a whole thing. You need yeah, to get, I, line them up. They don't want to play. It'll me, be like, like mustard Ocho versus. Cinco, he, I, he been running for a long time, oh. and I, I didn't expect him to run because he like. I mean, I do. He he played football. I right. Play football, I, but I didn't expect him to like dodge me like this. Like it's it's, it's, it's kind of embarrassing. Well, now it's out on Billboard News. So yeah, Ocho, I, I think, think you really got to play a tennis match. Yeah, but he because... gonna duck it. He gonna duck it. He, <laughs> he can't duck it. It's he, out there on the internet. He now. been ducking for a long time. He gonna <laughs> duck it. And little Dicky too. He can. Anybody. This is like I tell everybody. This is a buffet. You can get anything you want for as long as you want with me. So. I'm definitely ready to play whoever. I love it, man. Obviously excited about your new project, but what's on the horizons? What are you thinking about in the future? Well, what am I thinking about? My kids, making sure, like, I want my, all my kids to have, like, a good structure and, like, play tennis, do the right thing. Just, you know, like, teaching them that, that's, like, my first thing of, like, trying to get structure or trying, you know, just any kid. You don't know why I want to be, in, like, structure, but uh, that, I'm definitely going to start working on a new album, new music with everybody. But just not spreading myself too thin, cause. What about YG? What about Read Up Three? Read Up, <laughs> YG. I mean, it's pretty much done. I think it's gonna be. Oh, pretty so much it's done. done. It's done. I think it's gonna, it should be out. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, the be, label back out. here, like. <clears throat> uh, yeah. No, be, I think it'll be out by that time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you so much for coming out, hanging thank out you. with Billboard, and uh, congrats on the Hot 100. Thank you, man. Appreciate you.